Good morning, everyone. It is 8.15 on Friday. I have been so unmotivated, so I haven't done much around the house. All right, everyone. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on unloading the dishwasher and wiping down the counters and all that fun stuff. So here we go. So I got the dishwasher emptied. I'm going to go ahead and clean my dishwasher. Um, I'm going to add in about a cup of bleach and this is going to help disinfect it. And if you have any mold growing or anything in there, I'm not saying I do, but just in general, you know, the old girl is not cleaning great some days. So I think that it needs a good cleaning. I do do, um, I spray Dawn and vinegar in here and it helps get the soap scum out. But if you have a stainless steel dishwasher, do not add bleach to it. It will ruin it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And let's see, low energy. And I'll come back and do the dishes later. So now I've gone ahead and removed the bed pad, the sheets, the pillowcases, and the blankets. And I'm going to go ahead and wash them all. This little guy, he is trouble. You want to come in? They like this because this is a screened in porch here. So they like being able to come out here. Although the bigger cat does come out or go outside, but the little one, I don't let outside yet. So, so now it's time to do the wash. How many loads of wash do you do a day? Me, it could be three loads a day. It really depends because then some days I want to take days off. So then, you know, there's more wash. But did you jump in there? Where are you? Where did you go? The cat. The kitten, he is, he likes to jump in the dryer and I'm always afraid I'm going to turn it on when he's in there. Okay, so. Uh, mattress pad for our bed is a special one that we bought when we got the mattress. It's like heavy duty, you know, it doesn't let anything through to the mattress. So, very expensive, but it needs to be washed. Uh, I need to, our laundry room is really small, so I need to go ahead and sort this stuff. This is blankets and stuff that I just brought down. So I'm going to make him his sandwich. You want peanut butter and Nutella or just Nutella? Peanut butter and Nutella. Both of them? Yeah, peanut butter and Nutella. Okay. Let's see you take a bite. See how good it is. Is that delicious? Yes! Did I make a good sandwich? Yes! Yes. All right. You want a drink? Yeah. What would you like? Um, lemonade. Lemonade. All right. Okay, so I've gone ahead and started my list as well. I need to get some stuff done, and I always seem to forget what it was that I wanted to get done. So it's easy to make a list. Anyway, I need to look at the bills and budget, um, start thinking about the meal plan for next week. I need to sew a shirt. I did a swap for what? the couch with it. Okay. Um, I did a swap for boy's shirt, so she sent Mason a shirt, so I'm going to send her son a shirt, so I have to get that out today or tomorrow. 
Um, I need to organize under the kitchen sink. That is a mess. I want to make some fat bombs. Um, I want to make some cherry jam and strawberry jam. And there was something else, but I can't remember. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and make my breakfast. I am going to make some poached eggs and some bacon and one minute muffin, which I will show you. It's kind of like an English muffin, but not quite because it's low carb. But anyway, so I have some water here. I'm going to go ahead and add a splash of vinegar. This just helps the egg white um, coagulate. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some bacon on. that up a bit who's your daddy where's this kid come up with this stuff who's my daddy well then it dawned on me he's watching bear ghost so I guess it's who's your daddy edition or something because him and his son play okay so I'm gonna go ahead and drain my bacon you smell bacon. Well, you have a good nose, buddy. Go ahead and pop the eggs in. So Mason said he wanted some bacon. You want bacon? Yes. Well, there's chores to be done. You want bacon? Yes. <laughs> Why do you want bacon? The goods I do. <laughs> okay, here you go. Okay, so my eggs are done. I'm just going to go ahead and take them out and drain them. And I'm going to go ahead and just put them on the napkin over here because I don't want all that extra water on my plate. Okay, babe, just one second, okay? Let me finish getting the eggs out. Okay, so now they're out. I want to check back on my muffin. I hear it sizzling. Can you hear that? I'm go ahead and pop them up. They look like English muffins a little bit. All right, guys, so here's my breakfast. I have two poached eggs, bacon, and the flaxseed meal um, one-minute muffin and my rooster plate so anyway i'll let you see how uh if i like the the texture is kind of spongy but all right it's actually not bad like obviously it's not bread but there's some cheddar cheese in there so it gives it a nice flavor and then the flaxseed kind of tastes kind of like spinach. I don't know. Not bad, though. I like it for the texture. And I'll dip my... Whoa! Sorry, the dog just, like, tripped over something. So, I'm going to dip my eggs in... Or, dip in my eggs. Maybe. Let me try, uh... Pretty good. I mean, if I wasn't on a low carb diet, would I eat them? Probably not. But considering I don't want to eat bread, it's definitely a great alternative. So I'll link the recipe down below. You can try it if you want. And I'm going to go eat breakfast. See you in a little bit. Hey, so my battery died when I was uh, eating breakfast. So I decided to go ahead and just let it charge. And I went ahead and did the dishes and took a shower. I switched over the wash. So now I am just going to do my hair. Well, I think I'll just let it air dry today. I don't have anywhere to go. And then I am going to make the fat bombs. And also, I want to put on some um, homemade jam, so.
Before I start doing some cooking stuff, I do have to take care of some wash. So I figured I would just tell you about me and my family. So my husband and I met senior year in high school. We both went to um, tech school for cooking. We both went to separate high schools. I went to the local Catholic school and he went to a public school. So um, the year before, I had gone to the school to see if I would like it. And I decided to go the next year. I had seen him in the class when I went to visit and ironically, I worked with his girlfriend at the time in the classroom. So anyway, I decided to go the next year and the bell rang and I'm thinking, great, <laughs> I decided to join this class and he's not even in it. So then he comes moseying in the door and I got all nervous and excited. And of course, as fate would have it, the only open seat was the one next to me. So he had to sit next to me. Well, imagine I'm sitting here. This is him. He was so nervous, he couldn't even look at me. So after that, fate took over. And here we are 23 years later. We're still together. We just celebrated our 15th anniversary. So pretty exciting. I would never have thought. What's he doing? Okay. Um, I would have never guessed that we would get married. I mean, once we met, of course, I, I knew right away. But um, that we'd have four kids. And just what our life has become. So, uh, we had our first son in 2001. And really get off the table. Oh, this kitten drives me crazy. Thank you. So anyway, <laughs> Remy, hey, I'm trying to film here. Do you hear me? Remy, Remy, what are you doing? Go find me your baby. Where's your baby? Go get your baby. Where's the baby? Uh, uh. Uh, so we had him in 2001. And then we decided we would have another one. So Liam came in 2004. And when we had our 20 week ultrasound with him. He had markers, two soft markers for Down syndrome. So we decided not to go ahead with the apnea because we were gonna love him no matter what he came out as. Remy. So that was the longest 20 weeks waiting to see if he was okay, which thankfully he was. So he came and we named him after the fathers, my dad, my husband's dad, and then my stepfather. And then thought it would be a great idea to have another one. So along came number three, yet another boy in 2006. And we welcomed him with open arms. And then we decided to just wait. I knew that I would want one more because I'm an even, even numbers kind of girl. So after thinking about it, I wanted to wait a few years because I wanted to give the fourth child time to spend just one-on-one -on -one with me. I felt like having, with having the other three closer together, everything was just so rushed and just didn't have time to really enjoy, you know, like I had one-on-one -on -one time, but then it just got hectic some days and, but I look at the relationship that the older two have, there's not so much, they don't involve the third one too much because it's just the maturity level's different. So then in 2006, Mason came, no, <laughs> 2011, Mason was born. So, and the way that 
we came up with his name was uh, one night I was having insomnia so I was looking online for names and really I had no idea what to name him I liked Hunter but I didn't know if I really wanted it so I came across Mason and it screamed at me it screamed my son so I knew that it that's what it was so the next day I went to my husband and I said you know I have a name and he's really, he pretty much goes with whatever I want to do anyway. And he said, I like it. So then the middle name, we decided to name him after my brother-in-law, who would be his godfather. So that's how we came up with that name. So here we are, blessed with four boys. Who would have ever thought? You know, I always joke because... We were the last ones to carry on the family name. And it's like, okay, we got it now, guys. Joke's over. But, you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. My boys are awesome. They treat me great. I can't complain. So, other than that, we have um, Remy, who came into us as a foster puppy. She was just, I think, eight weeks. She's a Great Dane mix, and she came in as a foster, and at the time we had one dog. We had recently lost a dog to bloat, and then another one to old age. So that week, somebody was supposed to come look at her to see if they liked her and wanted to adopt her, and I just felt sick. I just could not let her go, and my husband felt the same way. So next thing you know, we welcomed a new dog to our family. And we love her. She just turned eight and we can see the aging. You know, her face is getting really gray and she had um, torn a ligament in her knee several years ago. So unless we get the operation done, which is several thousand dollars, we can just kind of help her along with medication. So that's what we do. We give it to her when we see that she's in pain. Um, not every day is pain for her. Like sometimes if she lays on the ground on that leg, when she gets up, you can see that it's sore. She'll start limping. Um, and then after we moved, moved in here, uh, we moved in here uh, October 1st, 2014. Um, in November, I went to the SPCA and I adopted a kitten which is Benny, and we've had him for an over a year now. And then um, right before Christmas, my husband and I were out shopping. I think it was Black Friday. And I said, oh, you want to stop in SPCA to see if they have any puppies? He wants a German Shepherd. So, of course, he's like, Arr! So we went in there, and we came across this adorable kitten. He was six weeks old, and he was the only one. He's like, he just kept talking and just wanted attention. I guess he had a sibling which had been adopted, so he was just lonely. So I held him and I gave my husband the eyes, which he knows. And um, he's like, you know, whatever. So I just let it go. I was like, you know what? We won't get him. Well, all night I thought about this kitten. And I just had to have him. So... Um, that was, so Saturday, Friday night into Saturday, and that Saturday we were having a surprise party for my mom, so time was just really crunched. So they opened up at 10 o'clock, so I called them as soon as they opened, and I said, do you still have this kitten named Teddy Bear? So they checked, and sure enough, they did. So I was so excited, I went flying up there, and I got him and brought him home. So we've had him for a couple months now, and he is just just a love bug. He's so cute and um, a little bit mischievous. He gets into my plant and the other day he knocked a frame off the shelf and shattered it and just <laughs> he's like another kid really. So okay well I am done folding this stuff. I'm gonna go put it away and then we can get started. Alright so first up I added four tablespoons of butter eight tablespoons of coconut oil and four tablespoons of peanut butter. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the microwave 
for about 35 seconds and let that melt. Okay, so seriously, uh, as I'm filming this, I just oops, looked out the window and, geez, really? Hold on, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Flurries. Like, we need more snow here. Okay, let me throw that in the microwave. Be right back. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and mix this up a bit. Okay, to that, I'm going to add four tablespoons of um, cocoa powder. This is unsweetened. Now, you might be wondering, what's the point of a fat bomb? A fat bomb is a treat kind of thing that helps curb the cravings for, you know, baked goods and all that stuff. But in the process, it also has a lot of fat and low carbs. So... It, it works in two ways. Okay, so let's go ahead and mix that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off. And scrape the sides down. So normally you would put like a sugar substitute in here, but I just can't get past the taste. So I'd rather go without than add it. But I'm gonna go ahead and add in some uh, Cool Whip because it's low carb. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in. That should give it a little bit of a sweetness flavor. Pray I don't make a mess. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and pour it into my silicone pan here. And it looks like there's still some stuff that is not mixed up, the cool whip. So, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and dump it in to make individual bite-sized snacks. And this really is a lifesaver because when you're doing low-carb, you don't want the sugar. So it just, you crave some sort of snack or, especially me, I love candy, chocolate, desserts. So this is a huge help. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pop these in the fridge, and I will show you later what they look like. All right, next up on my to-do list is homemade blue cheese dressing. People, this is real life here. I still have to put these dishes away. Anyway, first you're going to take 8 ounces of sour cream. Now this is 16, so I'm just going to go ahead and use half the container. And then to that, I'm going to add one cup of mayo. Then I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I'm going to add in six ounces of blue cheese. And half a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. I use the Bragg's. I love it. Okay, and then we're going to add in a half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And 
And that's it. We're going to go ahead and stir this up. Really? Just stir it up. Can't get it easier than that, right? Hey everyone, so now on to the next task. I'm going to make some cherry jam. Yum! Anyway, right now it is quarter to one. I don't know about you, but I could use an app. Man, this day seems very long. But anyway, let's get started. So I have a pot of water on the stove, and what I'm going to do is boil my jars before I put my jam in. Uh, I picked up these jars, if you can see them, at the thrift store for a couple dollars for eight of them, and I absolutely love them. They're from 1960 or so. They also come with these plastic lids. Um, I am not going to be canning mine with canning lids. I'm just going to put it in the fridge because it goes very quickly here, so I'm not going to waste my time doing the extra steps. But, um, so anyway, but if you are doing the lids, then you will need to boil them and the rings. And you can ask questions below because I have done it that way. For my mom's surprise party in November, um, we did favors of strawberry jam and banana bread. So I had to make up like 30 jars of jam. So here we go. Here is my pot. Now this pot has been well loved. This is my jam pot. So I'm going to go ahead. I picked up these dark sweet strawberries at Giant the other day. They had a deal buy one get one free. So I'm going to go ahead and add them in. And I have a couple more. So this comes out to about three cups. Okay. So now I'm just going to go ahead and smush these down a bit and turn the stove on. I guess that would help. I'm just going to smash them down. I don't like the jam totally pureed. I like to have chunks in it. My second son, Liam, absolutely loves my jam. So he's going to be very excited to see that I made it. The other day I had bought my first bag of cherries and I noticed someone had gotten into them. Well, it turns out it was Liam. Liam loves cherries. And I said, well, I was going to make you some jam, but now that you ate half the bag. So he's like, well, you could still make me some. But I ended up just getting another bag. So once this starts heating up and stuff, I can use my spoon to just kind of smoosh them down a bit. Like I said, I like some more whole pieces than so much grade. So we have that here. We're going to go ahead. We have pectin going ahead and adding one tablespoon. Now you're going to want to bring that to a boil while you're stirring. I went ahead and added some strawberries to this as well because when I added the sugar it just seemed like there was way too much sugar for the cherries I had. So I went ahead and added a bag of strawberries that I had and now I'm letting it come to a boil. I put my jars in the water over there and they're getting nice and sanitized. Oh, you know what? That's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get a bowl so that I can skim all the scum off the top. Get that out of the way. So you want to get, you can eat this frothy stuff. But if you're giving this as a gift or something, you know, you might not want to have it in there. So you just go ahead and skim it off. Once it starts boiling, it'll all kind of go to a corner and be easier. Alright, I'm not going to go too crazy since this is just for my son, well, for my family. So, now that it's come to a boil, I'm just going to give this a little stir. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this off now. And let's get some of this more off. Okay.
This side over here doesn't kind of... Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just taste it to see how the sugar is. I'm strictly just doing this for flavor, not consistency. Tastes good. Definitely doesn't need any more sugar. Okay, so now go ahead and turn it off. And then we're going to get our jars out of here. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my jam to my jars. Be very careful because it's very hot. I use this funnel. It's a canning funnel and it makes it so much easier to keep it clean. So now, here are the filled jars. I'm going to wipe the edges all around the edges and then I will let them cool before I put the lids on and put them away. Alright, next up, my fat bombs are ready to be popped out. So, seriously, this is like heaven when you're on a low carb diet. So, I'm just going to go ahead and pop these in the bowl. And I am going to go down and sew. I'm feeling pretty tired right now. <laughs> I sat down to eat lunch and I just didn't want to get back up. But I knew if I didn't get up, I wouldn't want to do anything. So I'm going to make my tea and I'm going to get ready to sew. So see you in a few. Hey everyone. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut my fabric out for the shirt I'm going to be making. So I'm using this cute Marvel print. Now, as shown on the pattern, this is a peekaboo pattern. I love her designs. Anyway, it's, it shows you. You want the stretch going side to side. So, And also, this little box here, if you don't sew, it means that you want to cut it on the fold. So I have already folded my fabric in half. And now I'm just going to place my pattern on here, where it indicates that I'm supposed to put it on the fold. And the way that you can tell the direction that the fabric goes you just want to stretch it. This fabric is actually a four-way stretch, which means it stretches both directions. Now, there are some... This I have is a sweater knit that stretches that way, but it doesn't stretch that way. You can see me pulling it, but there's a difference between that and this. So, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. And I'm going to get my rotary cutter if you don't know what this is this is like a pizza cutter but it's in very very sharp and this beats using scissors so I'm just gonna go cut my pattern out here Hey guys, so the two older boys are going to be home in about two minutes, so I'm going to find somewhere to hide to scare them. Ooh, they just got home. I gotta go. I gotta hide. I love scaring them. Okay, let's see where we can hide. Uh, I guess 
so height on this side. That way I can jump out at him. everyone so we're ready to sew <clears throat> this is my baby lock imagine serger i absolutely love it it's a dream machine <clears throat> excuse me so this is for the collar around the neck so what i'm gonna do i need to look this is the right side you can see the one side doesn't look quite as finished i guess so i'm gonna match up the edges and I am going to go ahead and serge the edge. Okay. Cut off the string. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take it and roll it so that the seam is on the inside. Let's see if you can see that. And then I'm going to fold it in half. And you'll see. I'm going to go ahead and clip this with my clips. Because I'm going to iron this before I use it. Just to help make it stiffer. I have that done I'm just gonna put that aside for now <clears throat> and then for the sleeves there's cuffs on the sleeves so what I'm gonna do is take my piece of fabric is that a little bit take my piece of fabric and I'm gonna fold it in half right sides together and I'm gonna go down and serge it and I'm gonna this time I'm only gonna turn it halfway and I'm going to meet up with this edge here. And again, I'll show you later when it comes to doing this step, what we're going to do with this. So you're just going <clears> to <throat> match the ends up. End up with, it's going to be the cuff. Let's see it. And this part's going to be sewn together with the sleeve. So you won't even see this. This will be on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the second one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start the shirt. I'm going to put this aside. Okay, so now I have the two top pieces. It looks like a tank top kind of, like this. So I just took the two ends here and I'm going to serge those together. So now we have that. And this is what you have. You have the front and the back, kind of like a vest, I guess. Okay. So now we have our shirt here, just back a little bit. And you have your sleeves. You're gonna wanna match, let's see if I can zoom in on this. You're going to want to match. Here's the midpoint. So find the midpoint on your sleeve. So midpoint's like right here. So I'm going to take that midpoint that I have and I'm going to match it up actually this way and put my clip on there. And then I'm going to find the other part of the sleeve, which is down here. And you can tell because it contours and then it goes down for the, the body. So I'm just going to match these two up. And again, you can pin all line there along there. I find it's just more time consuming. So it's easy for me just to find the three marks 
three points and then go from there. Actually, I'm not even going to do this one because that's where I'm going to start. And let's see that. Okay. <clears throat> the one side of the sleeve is done. So where the other side is still, I don't know if you can see, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay. So you have the sleeve here. The sleeve isn't sewn together yet, but it's attached at the shoulder. Okay. So then I'm going to go and match up the other side. So both sleeves are attached. They are not sewn in yet. So it's still open fabric. I'm going to do that right now. So what I'm going to do is turn the shirt inside out because again, you want the seam to be on the inside. So I'm going to match up the sleeve edges and I'm going to clip it. Maybe find a clip that's not attached to something else. Okay. Now, doing sleeves or something like this, you have to pay attention because <clears throat> here you have the seams on the inside. So you really want to try matching them up. Here, you probably can't really see, but you want to match them up so that when you sew it, they're right on on uh, point, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna pin them and we'll be ready to sew. Okay, so I went ahead and pinned these. I think I'm gonna change your view here and turn you around, hold on. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with the one sleeve. Put it in my serger. Now I'm going to turn the shirt right side out and you can see it's coming together. It looks like a shirt. So now I'm going to attach my neck band, put you down a little bit so you can see. Okay, so you want to find in the middle again. So I'm going to estimate it's about here. So. I'm going to get my marker. So I'm just going to put a little mark in here and directly across them and I'll put one there. And then I know by the shoulder seams that that's pretty much the sides. So I have my neck band here that is marked. So I'm going to look for the part that had the seam that I had surged and that's going to go in the back of the shirt. So we're definitely going to make sure that's back there. Sorry, I was just listening for my son. Okay. Under my needle. Down. And then I like to just get the needle in at least, and then I can reposition myself and see where all my pieces are because the last thing you want is to go over a piece of the shirt done that don't want to do it again okay so now i see that all my edges align so i'm going to go ahead So I didn't get to show you the last steps of the shirt. My camera battery died and I really wanted to get the shirt done today. So here's the finished product. I added a band on the bottom and then here are the sleeve cuffs and the shirt overall, you can see. 
And that's that. I love it because it goes together so quickly. All right, so I went ahead and seasoned our potatoes for the baked potato wedges. I just did some black pepper, some bacon and chive, some Italian seasoning, and some garlic salt. So I am just going to go ahead and pop them in the oven. Right now I have it at 390 as they cook. I'm going to go ahead and turn it up so they get crisp on the outside. Here's what's for dinner tonight. We have baked potato wedges, um, battered fish, breaded shrimp, and a side salad. Here's what's on the low carb menu tonight. This is the Tuscan fish that I had shown you in a previous video. Um, some roasted cauliflower with some herbs and Parmesan cheese and then a side garden salad.